We are back with another episode. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in again. Another week, another episode. This one, I'm going to have some fun with it. I might hit some people in the wrong places that they're not expecting. But again, it is what it is. Daps, and it's always love. Listen, <clears throat> every week I try to give you an episode that you'd appreciate. Every week I try to ask and, and, and answer questions that I might have, that I'm assuming and thinking sometimes that you might have, um, you know. <clears throat> so I go in and I, I dig and I write it up and and here I, I deliver it to you. But before we get into this episode, listen, I would like it. I would like it and I would love it um, if everybody went in, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, followed the show, shared the shows and the episodes, and so forth. But I know you're doing that already, and if you're not, it doesn't cost you a thing. Please do that for me. I appreciate it, and uh, it means a lot. But before we get into it, I want to wish everyone a wonderful 2023, right? I told you I'm going to keep wishing you guys this, right, in the first quarter. Um, <clears throat> also, you know, uh, Black History Month is around the corner. I want to make sure you guys all tune in. Pick up a copy of that book, the children's book, The Best of Gray, if you don't have a copy already, right? It's a book that my daughter and I put together. Uh, it's the second year anniversary for it. Go ahead and support it. Look out for another book this year. At the end of the year, we'll be dropping another book. And that one's going to be, you know, one step above the one that you're going to support me with this year. So, um, <clears throat> but again, I want to wish you a wonderful 2023 and may all your wishes and dreams come true. Uh, may you also accomplish every single goal and objective that you have in place for yourself this year. Now, if one of your goals or objective is to like, subscribe or share an episode um, of this podcast, please take a moment to fulfill one of your goals and get it out of the way right now. Do that. <laughs> Telling you, man, I appreciate it. Okay? Thank you. Complaining and quitting, <clears throat> right, are not an option. So we got to push forward. And believe you, you, you deserve it. Okay? You got to believe in yourself. I've been preaching that for the last how many years? Uh, you got to believe in yourself that you deserve it because you do and that you are worthy of every single blessing that's going to come your way. The opposite of poverty isn't wealth. However, enough is the opposite. Think about that for a minute. The question is, how would you know when you have enough or that you're living in poverty? This episode is talking about the poverty mentality or the poverty mindset. And what is it? A lot of us have it. A lot of us had it. A lot of us are going to have it. And what do you do and how do you, pardon me, what do you do and how do you get out of that mentality? Okay? Now, allow me to give you the short answer. And then as I share more information, you'll start to realize We'll dive in a little bit deeper with it, okay? <clears throat> but it's a real thing. A poverty mentality influences behaviors, right? And these behaviors are consistent with your beliefs, right? Some of your beliefs might be that money shouldn't be spent. I got to hold on to every dollar, every penny, okay? Uh, opportunities are limited, right? So if somebody gets an opportunity, you say to yourself, that's it. There's no more. There's none left. Uh, I, I won't be able to get the same opportunity. That's it. Well, you know, so-and-so got all of it, and that's it. Okay? Uh, any form of risk is dangerous, right? You don't want to take any risk at all. Like, you're, you're risk adverse. So, nope. Oh, I, got, I might lose a dollar? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not doing that. I might, I might uh, lose a, a day of pay if I take a vacation or a day off just to rest my body. Oh, no, no, no. Right? Crossing the street is a risk. Going to the mall is a risk. Walking down the street is a risk. Being in your house is a risk. 
everything you do as long as you're breathing is a risk okay um the other part is any success cannot be replicated oh you got lucky you can't do that again right or if you did something and you were successful at it you don't even think about trying to do it again because you think that was it it was a one one off okay um you can't replicate any success that you get or when you do get the success you say to yourself that ah oh, it wasn't it's not going to last anyway you know it's only going to be for like a month and then people are going to forget about this and go back to doing what they're doing okay and and just for that one there if everybody out there believed that we wouldn't have people that are successful if i bought into that mindset Right, I wouldn't have this episode that you're listening to because this show wouldn't be around. I know people who started podcasts. They did three, four, five episodes, and that was it. Now I don't know their circumstances. I'm just using it as an example, right? So, and that not taking any chance, right? That mentality of don't take the chance because it's the safest bet. Right, it makes it the safest action to take. Well, if I don't move, then I'll never have to worry about getting hurt. I don't know if that works in life. So, those are the conditions. Those are the, the telltales that will tell you, "Hey, I have a a poverty mindset." Right. So, keep that in the back of your mind. You might be there today. You might have been there yesterday. You might be there tomorrow, but recognizing that you're there is the first step. So you know that you have to get out of something. If you don't know you're in something, you'll never get out of it. Okay. Now, with all that said, if I called you out or made you feel uncomfortable um, with that definition, then I'm speaking to you. And if I didn't impact you the same way, then I need you to quickly share this with someone who will benefit a great deal from it, okay, from this episode today. So if you think you know someone who's going to benefit from it because maybe this doesn't apply to you for some reason, then share it, please. It doesn't cost you anything. Two clicks of a button, right? Every like, every follow, every subscription helps me grow this episode. And also, I would love to get your feedback and your comments because that helps me uh, keep digging and pushing and questioning and even challenging some of my own ideas, right? And that's what I would like for me to be able to challenge some of my own ideas sometimes and, and keep growing as a person as well. <clears throat> now, this mindset is, illustrates a lack of belief in yourself, right? Uh, belief in your abilities, your potential, and people with this poverty mindset also believe that they are destined to be where they are currently, right? Whether that's, you know, being poor, uh, not getting opportunities or not seeing or recognizing the opportunities that they, they don't have the ability to improve their situation, right? Oh, I grew up in the hood or I grew up in so-and-so northern. I, I grew up in a rural area, small town. I can't. We don't do these things. This is not for us. We don't get lucky like that, right? We're not successful like that. We don't get those breaks, right? Or oh, I didn't finish college, and so therefore I won't get the same opportunity. You know, I didn't go to university. I went to college, but I didn't go to university, so I may not get the same opportunity. No, no. This mindset is, is damaging, okay? It leads to feelings of literally hopelessness and, and lack of motivation to strive for anything, okay? So... Let's work on shaking that, right? And, <clears throat> I mean, if everything I've said so far doesn't tell you that you have this mindset, I'm going to give you some more signs, okay? So let's start with the first one. When you believe that you are a victim of others' decisions and choices, that means when someone makes a decision or a choice, you feel like it hurts you directly. It impacts you directly. Even though they physically didn't have anything to do with 
the decisions that you chose to make. Right? So that's one. When you fear spending money on non-essentials, that means you don't necessarily want to take care of yourself in a different way than the essentials. When you um, are constantly in search of the cheapest alternative, because you don't want to buy the quality thing that you deserve, but you won't do that. You won't spend the money or invest in you. So you look for the cheapest alternative. Okay? Um, when you have an obsession with getting deals uh, or free entry into spaces and events, right? That's a sign. When you believe that you're lucky when you succeed, right? And you also believe in the same breath that you're incompetent when you fail. Okay? Because you're making it about you and not your performance. Not the task at hand that was required of you. And not giving yourself credit for what you were able to accomplish. And the effort and the time and the energy that you put into succeeding. So be aware of that. I can really trip you up. Okay? Uh, when you're denying yourself <clears throat> as an ongoing way of life, right? You keep denying yourself. No, no, it's not for me. Mm -mm. Vacation? No, no, no. I got to save my money. Oh, no, no I got to get this car. But it's going to take me five years. And so, um, yeah, I'm not going to take a vacation at all. I'm just going to keep working over time and doing whatever it is that I need to do, right? Or your kids are now teenagers and they can start working and providing for themselves here and there. But you still say, oh, no, 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 mm -mm. No, I got to do this for my kids, and I get it. I understand. I'm a parent. But at some point, you won't be around. and No one's going to be able to do these things for them. So you're going to have to take care of you, see if you can stick around a little bit longer, because they need your wisdom and your guidance more than they need your money and your things. Okay? Um, so don't deny yourself things that are good for you. Okay? Uh, the feeling of guilt <clears throat> when you have more than someone else, right? And you start judging other people who also have more than others, okay? That's a poverty mentality. So those are signs to let you know. Um, the fear of being seen as boasting when you describe a simple accomplishment, right? So keep that in the back of your mind. If you're that person, you do have a poverty um, mentality, Never picking up a check, <laughs> someone else uh, may pick it up, right? So you go out with some friends or some people and you don't pick up the check because you feel like, oh, as long as so-and-so picks it up, then I'm good. I got to keep my money in my pocket. That goes to right one of the first points that I mentioned. And then uh, never feeling you have enough right reserves or resources. You're always low, right? Not enough sugar, not enough this, not enough that. Right? You're always behind on that, okay? And also when you believe you may lose it all despite everything that you do or that you did to get it, which means you can repeat it. But instead you believe you might lose it all, right? So those are tells. Those are tells. And I know there are plenty of people out there with this mentality. One of these multiple of these and i want to speak about artists and uh the creative community for one second just a split second and, and even entrepreneurs right because sometimes we say these things to ourselves why would they listen to me i'm not an expert in this right i just started four years ago i'm not an expert in this right uh you can't charge that much oh my gosh why so much? Again, you're not an expert. How can you afford Why? Why do you think you deserve to charge people so much? Right? You're not like so-and-so who's been around for 20 years. Okay? Or this one. I don't belong in that room because I don't have the master's degree or the PhD or um, a doctrine or whatever it is, that piece of paper or a million dollars. So you took yourself out of a room and the only thing that's keeping you from going in that room is that door and the knob on it. 
Nobody said you have to own the room. Right? Nobody said you need you, you have to have those requirements in order to get in the room. But you told yourself you don't belong in the room. So that room will never see you. That's a mentality. Okay? So let's get rid of that. You belong there, get in there, and be yourself. Be yourself. Because that's what it's about. Okay? Um... So <clears throat> a poverty mentality can also be rooted in various factors, and that's including your past experiences of poverty, if, if you had some, um, or just experiences in general, other people's experiences that you've witnessed or vicariously been kind of transferred over to you because you were around, negative messaging, right, from other people, parents, um, mentors, Maybe people that you looked up to is what I mean when I say mentors. Um, people that you aspired to be, people that you respected. Okay, they might have said some things that, you know, over time you believed, you bought into that were negative, and a lack of exposure to opportunities. Okay, now those are some of the root um, causes that could lead to that mentality. In many cases, this mentality can also be cultural because we spend majority of our time with, sorry, with or around people with a poverty mindset, right? I'm sure you've all heard it. Show me your friends and I'll show you uh, who you are or your future or something along those lines, right? So we need to acknowledge that our, our parents are also not exempt from that list of people that I just described briefly. And over time, this mindset becomes normalized and accepted. So we become adults from little people and we perpetuate it. We repeat it to our kids and, and so forth. And that's that vicious cycle. Okay? So you got to be aware of that. You got to be present and, and be aware that you're doing this. Catch yourself. Correct yourself. Okay? You got to catch yourself and correct yourself. That's important. A poverty mindset can be reinforced, right, by lack of education, right? So I'm not reading, I'm not self-educating, I'm not going to school to learn new things or I'm not surrounding myself with different people who have different experiences to learn new things, okay? That's education. It's not just going to a building and learning how to read a book and write papers. Education is coming from everything around you. Are you willing to learn, teach yourself new things, picking up different books that you otherwise would never look at? And read them. See what they, they teach you about the world that you're living in. Okay? Um, and social support. Okay? Lack of social support uh, can also be uh, reinforcing that mentality. Now, one of the critical conditions is a lack of access to resource and opportunity. So, <clears throat> if there are no resources around me, like a library or any of those things, to help me get new information then that's going to be detrimental to my development, right? Um, opportunities are interesting because sometimes they are available, sometimes they present themselves, sometimes you have to create them, okay? And sometimes you have to find them. Like, you got to go out and look for them. A lot of people think that they can just sit where they are and that it'll come to them. no. It's either going to come to you because you're attracting it based on what you're doing, okay? But if you're not doing anything, it's not coming to you. It's not interested. It's not attracted to, you know, idle time and hands. People just sitting there not doing anything with themselves. That's not how opportunity works. Sometimes you got to go out and find the opportunity, and then it attracts itself to you because it knows you are out there seeking it, okay? So be aware of that. I think that's important. Uh, without such resources, this mentality can literally plague a group of people or communities. And we've seen it. like Communities that I represent and other communities see it for generations to come, right? So we got to shake it. We got to shift it. That's the only way around it. Got to try something new. The old isn't working anymore, okay? People with a poverty mindset also <clears throat> may engage in self-defeating behaviors, right? Um, like failing to pursue higher education, if that's something that may help you. 
uh, career opportunities, they also tend to avoid taking risks, right? Uh, they blame others for their circumstances and, and engage in negative self-talk. And that's a very, very powerful one, self-talking, right? And, and what it means. So we got to pay attention to that, what we say to ourselves. Not necessarily is it all the time that um, what someone else says to you is going to have the impact. It's what you say to yourself, has greater impact because it's who you're supposed to be. And, and, you know, if you're telling yourself all these bad things, it means nothing when someone else tells you the same thing. You can't get offended or upset. It doesn't work like that. You already did the damage. It just so happens you've done so much of a damage that it's starting to show that someone else external of you is able to identify and say it. Okay? So it starts with the person in the mirror. You got to start there. Okay, what can you do to change this though, this mindset? Because I'm telling you what it is and how it can be problematic. But what can you do to change it? Because it can be very challenging, but it's possible. But it requires effort and support. Right? Ultimately though, I want to I wanna <clears throat> call it an abundance mentality. Okay, an abundance mentality. So think about that is one that affirms you I'm speaking to you. It affirms for you that you are worthy. You are worthy of all the success that you get. Right. And that you can be successful and that you can replicate that success. Abundance reminds you and instills in you that you have the value, you have the talents, you have the skill sets. Right, that are in strong demand. That means everybody wants it. It's in strong demand, and you can manage most situations that, you, that come your way, and do it well. Okay, there are some strategies that may be helpful, right, for you uh, with this mindset. Seeking out education. Okay, I'm stressing it. Um, job training. Building a supportive uh, net network of friends and family. Setting goals for yourself that you want to aim and, and work towards. Okay? It's also going to help you seek out therapy um, or a mental health support to address underlying issues and beliefs that may be you know, contributing to that poverty mindset. Okay? Previous episode, I was talking about um, uh, anxiety. Right? And how some of us don't go out and get that help. We don't use the resources that are often at our doorstep. Okay? So you need to be aware of what's available to you and how you can access it and take advantage of it. I also mentioned self-talking, that negative self-talk. <clears throat> Pardon me. Right? I mentioned that negative self talk, and how do we get ourselves out of that? Because we have to. If you find yourself engaging in negative self talk, there are several, you know, steps that you can take to break that cycle. Start speaking to yourself in a more positive and supportive way. Okay, uh, you have to become aware of that negative self talk. So if it's happening, you need to be able to catch it. Again, if you don't catch it, you can't stop it. Okay, you can't correct it. So. Pay attention to the thoughts that you have about yourself and your abilities. And notice if you're using words that are critical or harsh. If they are, you need to change it. Don't make them your truth because they aren't. You can change them. Okay? Once you've identified those negative um, self-talk words that you're using against yourself or towards yourself, try to challenge and refrain from those thoughts. That means you have to be present. You have to be aware that this is happening and know I want to change it and this is what I want to happen. Okay? Um, ask yourself if these thoughts are realistic, are they accurate, and are they even helpful to me and my well-being? If the answer is no to all those three, then you clearly can tell that you need to switch something up. I'll give you an example. Okay? If you catch yourself thinking... I can't do this. That's negative self-talk. Right? 
reframe from that thought by saying something along the lines of, this is challenging, but that doesn't mean I can't try or give it my best effort. You see the difference here? The minute you threw in the first, the first example, you said, I can't do this. That means I threw in the towel, I quit, I'm not even going to bother. I'm not going to try, I'm not even going to look at this thing anymore. Take it out of my mind, I'm done. But when I say it's challenging, it doesn't mean that I can't try it or I can't give it my best. That means I'm going towards that challenge. I'm going to try it. I'm going to give it my best and see what comes of it. And if I fail, guess what? At least I tried. I know what the process takes. I know what it requires. I also now know where I fell short. But with the first example, because I didn't even bother I don't even have that information, which means I did not even educate myself by trying the process. You see how that works? Okay? So try and give it your best. That's all you can do in any and every situation. Okay? It can also be helpful <clears throat> for you to practice self-compassion. You got to treat yourself with the same kindness and understanding that you would offer a friend or your partner. You deserve it. So instead of being self-critical, try to be understanding and supportive of you. And then finally, try to replace the negative talk with positive affirmations. We've all heard those before. Okay? Choose words and phrases that are supportive and uplifting. Repeat them to yourself throughout the day. Yes, you're going to sound crazy, but you're going to have to do that. Right? You might say something like, I am capable and I am worthy. That's important to repeat that. I am capable and I am worthy. Or I'm strong. I'm capable of overcoming challenges. And you just repeat, repeat, repeat. Because that's what it's going to take. That's what it's going to take. is effort and you trying and giving it your best. Now, keep in mind that Changing your self-talk takes time and practice. The same way the negative self-talk took time and years of practice. You're not going to undo it in a month. Right? Your lifestyle is changing. Now you're going to have to do it for the second half of your life. Okay? So that's what it is. The negative self-talk, right, didn't happen overnight. So... It's got a strong foundation. So for you to try to undo that, you're going to have to do a lot of digging. Okay? Because this influenced you, you know, for a long time. So you got to be patient with yourself. Continue to challenge yourself. Refrain from those negative thoughts as they pop up. But with time and effort, I promise you, you will learn to speak to yourself in a more positive and supportive way. And that's without a doubt. I hope you found this information useful. I hope you've, you found it inspirational. Um, I benefited a great deal from it when I did my research and, and learning more about, you know, <clears throat> how to set our, ourselves up for better opportunities and successful and healthy individuals as healthy individuals. Right. So without further ado, um, please subscribe to the show um, on Podbean as well as on YouTube share the show, right? You can reach many more ears, minds who will benefit from, you know, this content. And of course, you're going to help me grow this channel and the show. All right. Until next episode, show a lot more love to yourself. Give yourself a lot more peaceful moments and more joy and happiness. Until next episode, peace.